Can you say amen tonight? Amen. It's good to see each and every one of you tonight. Good to see some old faces. Good to see some new faces. Good to see some old friends. Good to see some new friends. I know I saw Mary Lou and Johnny in the back. I know I saw Logan and Brother Mike. And I got to see uh, Miss Terry. And uh, good to see Peyton. Good to see James. Good to see Daniel. I'm trying to remember some names. It's good to see everybody in the house of the Lord tonight. Can you say amen? amen? It's good to see all these brothers that I've mentioned, these sisters that I've mentioned. Thank you, music ministers. But as tonight, we've set apart this time for revival. We've set apart this time, and I've already began this sermon mentioning all these people. I want to mention this very clearly. Tonight is not about this set of people. Tonight is not about the pastor in the second pew. Tonight is not about the preacher in the pulpit. Tonight is not about the people that are sitting in the back of the pew. Tonight is not about the music ministers. Tonight, tonight is not even about you ultimately. Tonight is about bringing glory and honor to the triune Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit into His glorious and magic name or majesty name that we may praise his name. As we look at the scriptures tonight, we're going to be looking at one of the I am statements that is found in John's gospel. John has already mentioned within his gospel that he is the bread of God that has come down from heaven. John has mentioned that he is the light of the world as we look at the scriptures tonight. But as we look at the scriptures tonight, we're going to be looking at Jesus's third I am statement where he says, I am the door. Jesus, as he speaks, there will be many discussion of sh a shepherd. There will be much discussion of the sheep. There will be discussion of the sheepfold. And tonight, my question and my exhortation to you is would you just come through the door? Come through the door. Jesus' third I am statement is, I am the door. But before we get started tonight, I have a quick and short confession to make in each and every one of you. When I begin to think about the discussion of doors, one specific memory of one door still haunts me to this very day. It was a hot summer in northeast Louisiana, and a newlywed couple had just moved in together. The wife began to decorate her home, and she was trying to be as creative as she could while she was decorating. The size of this home was so small that any average piece of furniture took up nearly the entirety of this entire house. There was fresh cotton and fresh sunflower seeds or sunflowers that were picked in this home. And one day, the wife decided that she wanted to bring home this one antique and rustic door that she had found as a prize. Remember, she was a newlywed. She was excited about this door. The wife proceeded to bring home this old, antique, rustic door to this home. The, this door took up almost the entirety of the house, but the husband did not like that door. Acting in stubborn stupidity, the husband took the antique rustic door and took the door and threw it out into the garbage bin across the road. The wife became enraged with the husband, and they thus had their first newlywed argument. Needless to say, this husband has another door in his house to this day, and that husband is me. <laughs> But as we look at the scriptures tonight, I want you to remember this story as we come back to the end. But tonight as we look at this subject, I want you to keep in mind the thought of the door. And as we speak of the door, I would exhort you, come through the door. If you have your Bible tonight, and if you're willing and able, please turn to John's Gospel in the 10th chapter, John chapter 10, verses 1 through 9, and stand together with me as we honor the reading of God's holy, sufficient, authoritative, inspired, and errant, infallible word of the living God. John chapter 10, verses 1 through 9, this is the word of the Lord. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, 
and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. This is the word of the Lord. You may be seated. Bow with me for a word of a prayer and we'll get started this evening. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we're just so thankful for this day, Lord, and we're just so thankful for who you are, Lord, we're just so thankful for the songs that we were able to sing to you tonight, and Lord, we're so thankful that you brought us together to your house in this very time, Lord. Lord, I don't believe in mistakes, I don't believe in coincidences, I believe in your sovereignty alone, and I know that you have sovereignly set apart this very evening, and you have brought each of us to your house, whether we are converted, whether we are unconverted, you have set apart this time, and you have brought us to hear the word of the living God. So Lord, I pray that as the word of God is proclaimed tonight, that it would go out with power, that it would, sharp, it would be sharp as we heard prayed earlier in our prayer meeting time. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Lord, I pray that the Word of God would pierce the heart of lost sinners and that You would bless the means of grace and that You would take the Word of God and You would, you would save somebody for Your own honor and glory. This preacher tonight comes before this congregation admitting that I'm not smart, I'm not clever, I can't create an atmosphere, I don't know what I'm doing apart from preaching the Word of God. But I come to you tonight, Lord, believing that the Word of God is sufficient. I come to you tonight believing that the Word of God is inspired. I come to you tonight believing that the Word of God is powerful and that it's transformational. So, Lord, as we preach tonight, help us to preach in the Spirit. Lord, help us to glorify you. Help us to make this night about who you are, that your name would receive honor and glory and praise, and that each of us would fall on your face and humble ourselves and repent of sin and come and find an altar and cry out to the Lord that we would be drawn to the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe we're here tonight and we haven't hit an altar in many years. Maybe there hasn't been a time where we haven't prayed for a specific thing in a long time. Maybe we've come tonight lost and, and undone. Lord, I pray that you would just work in a way that only you would receive honor and glory. Lord, help me to decrease. I pray that you would increase. And it's into the precious, glorious name of Jesus Christ that I pray. Amen. To establish our understanding of where we're at in John's Gospel, it's important for us to look at this verse within its context. John chapter 10 begins with Jesus speaking, but Jesus has already been speaking at the end of John chapter 9. Do you remember John chapter 9 when Jesus heals a man that was blind from birth? Do you remember this? Somebody help me out and say amen. amen. Do you remember Jesus healed this man? He was blind from birth. And then you remember that the blind man went to the Pharisees. The blind man went to the Pharisees and they asked him, who healed you? And he says, I don't know who healed me, but I do know this. I once was blind, but guess what? Hello, somebody. Now I can see, praise the Lord. Amen. And as, as he's telling them this, the Pharisees and the religious leaders, they're getting very upset. They're throwing a fit. They want to know who this person is that healed this blind man. So Jesus, at the, beginning of, at the end of John chapter 9, has this conversation with the Pharisees. In verse 40, he says, Some of the Pharisees near him heard these things and said to him, are we also blind? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no guilt. But now you say we see. Your guilt remains. It is that the, thought, the, the background of this context that Jesus is going to make his third I am statement where he says, I am the door. Now I want to warn you all tonight. My first sermon point is tremendously longer than my second and third sermon point, so you need to buckle your pew belts tonight and just hold on with me. Amen. My first point tonight is sheep. Sheep. Look at the first five verses of John chapter 10. 
He says, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep, to whom the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Tonight, as we've set apart this time, my exhortation to you at the beginning was come through the door. Are you a sheep? Within the first five verses of John chapter 10, Jesus mentions a form of the word sheep or shepherd or sheepfold six times. My question to you tonight is, are you a sheep? The first thing that Jesus says about the sheep is that they must enter by the door. Tonight I want to tell you that if you will be born again, you must enter by the door. Jesus is using the sheepfold to symbolize the destination where the sheep must go. The sheepfold symbolizes security and, and comfort and warmth only found through the person of the shepherd. The sheep experience the comfort of the gatekeeper when they go through the door. You may be asking yourself, what in the world is a sheepfold? We don't live in ancient biblical times. Well, I'm glad you asked. The sheepfold would likely have either been a circular or square enclosure probably constructed with a high stone fence or wall, and perhaps topped with vines. The entrance would have been the only break in the wall. And once the sheep were safely inside at night, the shepherd would lie down in the doorway, across the opening, and it would serve as both a protection from the outside and security from the inside. The only way for the sheep to enter into the sheepfold is that they must come through the door. Tonight as we preach the word of God, I must tell you, if you will enter into the kingdom of heaven, you must come through the door. Repent of your sins tonight and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and come through the door. Ask the Lord Jesus Christ to forgive you of your wretchedness and come through the door. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Come through the door. Place your trust in the door and come through the door. If you're not a sheep tonight, I would encourage you, come through the door. Amen. True safety comes from the blessed assurance of salvation that the shepherd alone gives you. Today, if you're not a Christian, I would encourage you, please, just come through the door. Amen. The next thing that Jesus says of the sheep is found in verse 3. Look at verse 3 if you brought your Bible tonight. He says to him... The gatekeeper opens, the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls out his own sheep by name. I want to tell you this calling is the divine, effectual calling that comes from the throne room of heaven by the Spirit of God. And if you will be saved, you must be called out by the shepherd. The shepherd individually calls out his own sheep. And not only does he call out his own sheep, he calls out his own sheep by name. When God speaks to his sheep, they hear his voice. Hello, somebody now. When God calls you out and you hear his voice, he is calling you out of sin. He is calling you out of death. He is calling you out of the schemes of the devil. He is calling you out of the world. I want to tell you, if the shepherd is calling, come through the door. This teaching matches up with the rest of the entirety of Scripture. Jesus in John's Gospel just a few chapters ago said, No man can come to the Father except he is drawn. If the Spirit of God is calling you out by name, I would tell you to come through the door tonight. Again, I ask you, are you a sheep? Have you heard the voice of the shepherd? Has he called out your name? Has the Lord led you out of your sin? Have you ever believed on the Lord Jesus Christ? Has the Father drawn you to salvation? Have you gone through the door? Have you been converted? Have you been converted? Somebody buckle your pew belt tonight. I'm not trying to coerce anybody with any easy believism scheme tonight. I'm not here tonight trying to implore you to accept Jesus into your heart. I'm not asking you if you made a decision. I'm not asking you 
if you chose Jesus tonight, as we have gathered tonight, and as we have looked at the scripture, I am asking you, has the shepherd called you out? Has he called out your name? Has he led you from your sin? Has the Father brought you to the door? Tonight I'm asking you about salvation. Have you been born again? Have you been saved? Have you went through the door? Look at verses 4 and 5 as I attempt to catch my breath here. What else does Jesus say about these sheep? Look at verses 4 and 5. He says, when he has brought out all his own, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Jesus says the sheep follow the shepherd because they know his voice. If you study anything about sheep or anything about some animals that are very domesticated, actual sheep recognize the voice of their own shepherd and they will not respond to that of another shepherd. Sheep quickly become accustomed to their owner's particular voice. They are acquainted with its particular tones, its inflections. They know when the shepherd is calling the sheep. They can distinguish the shepherd's voice from the false voices that are all around them. Once again tonight, I want to ask you, are you a sheep? Do you follow the shepherd's voice? Do you follow the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you listen to his commandments? Do you obey the shepherd? Does the shepherd discipline you whenever you're doing wrong? All of these are good signs that you are a sheep. Amen. But if you don't follow the Lord, then the chances are that you're not a sheep. You're a goat. Hello, somebody. <laughs> Jesus says that the sheep will not hear, or the, the goat will not hear the voice of a stranger. In Matthew's Gospel, Jesus says that all of the sheep are at His right hand and that they will enter into heaven, and that all the goats will be thrown into the lake of fire tonight. If you're a goat, I would encourage you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and come to the door and trust in Him for salvation. If He's calling you out by name, listen to the voice and run to the shepherd tonight. Amen? Amen. Many people who call themselves sheep are following the many voices of strangers. They're following the world. They're following the secularization of America. They have gone astray. During vacation season, you follow the voice of comfortability. Hello, somebody. During the week, you follow the comfort and the money and the idol of your job. On the weekend, you follow the idol of your family. And if this is true to you, I would encourage you to quit listening to the world, quit listening to the flesh, and hear the voice of the shepherd and obey and trust his divine and holy will. If this is you tonight and you are not born again, come to the door. Amen. The invitation is open. If the shepherd is calling you out, come through the door. Is anybody with me? Say amen. amen. I told you that was a long first point. <laughs> My second point tonight is verse 6, and that is the, the point of sheep. Sheep. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. Jesus now has just got done talking to the Pharisees, and he's addressing them concerning the sheep. He was teaching them how the sheep follow the voice of the shepherd. The they in verse 6, as I just mentioned, are those Pharisees. Jesus is preaching a message to religious people. Jesus was using a figure of speech, and commonly throughout the Bible, Jesus would speak in parables to confound the wise. Jesus would speak in such a way that the religious ones that are hardened to the Word of God would not be under to understand this. How does this apply to you tonight? If you can't understand spiritual teachings, this means one of two things from you tonight. You might not understand spiritual things because you don't have the Spirit of God to interpret those things. Lost people do not understand the spiritual things concerning the Bible. The Bible says the natural man understandeth not the things of the Spirit. They are, they are foolish to him. He cannot accept them. Another reason tonight you may not understand spiritual teachings is because you are an immature Christian and you have put no effort into growing in the grace and the knowledge of the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul, as he taught the Corinthians, told them that they are on the milk of God's Word. He wanted to feed them meat, but they were on the milk of God's Word. I know many pastors that would like to get deeper in the Word of God. They would like to dig you and deliver you a steak. But they know that if they give you a steak, that you 
will gag on it because you put no effort into growing as a Christian Monday through Saturday. One of these two things applies to you. We need the Spirit of God to interpret spiritual matters in our lives. If you still don't understand what I'm talking about, let me give you an illustration. If my wife was here, this would be a whole lot easier. My wife loves medical terminology. She works in the medical field. Uh, she's a medical office assistant. If I went to the hospital today and one of you were diagnosed and I was coming to visit you, and the doctor was by my side and began to tell me all of this medical information, it would shoot about a hundred feet out of my head because truthfully, I don't know what is going on. But my wife knows all the medical terminology. She is my interpreter. She is my helper. She is the one that takes those truths and reveals to them, them to me and makes them easier to understand. The Bible describes the Holy Spirit as our helper. And He is the one who makes known the Scriptures to us. He is the one that draws you to Jesus Christ. He is the one that reveals to you that you are in desperate need of a Savior. This is the theological doctrine of illumination. Tonight my prayer is that the Holy Spirit of God is illuminating his words and that you understand what's going on tonight. I want to tell you, come through the door. Run to the shepherd. The Pharisees, they're not part of the sheep. He's just got done telling them that they're thieves and they're robbers. Had they been a part of the sheep, they would have heard the voice of the shepherd. And they would have ran to the voice of the shepherd. But they did not understand the voice of the shepherd. The shepherd had not called them out by name. Look at verses 7 and 9 as we look at my last point tonight. And that is the point of simplify. Simplify. Jesus is going to simplify these teachings in order that these religious, pharisaical, religious people will be able to understand what he is saying. Verses 7 through 9. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved, and he will go in and out and find pasture. If there is any doubt at all about what Jesus is talking about, if there is any level of confusion for anyone that is sitting under the sound of my voice, if there is anyone that does not know what's going on tonight, Jesus is about to make it very simple to each and every one of you. Jesus very clearly and simply begins by saying, truly, truly. Or he says, verily, verily. In the Greek, amen, amen. What I am saying is absolute truth, and I am speaking with the authority that God has given me to speak to you. I am the door. Amen. Come through the door tonight. Jesus is the door. Jesus is the only way of salvation. Jesus is your only hope in this life. Jesus is the only person who gives you true peace. Jesus is your only way to enter into the sheepfold. Jesus is your only security. Jesus is the door. Tonight, I want to tell you, come through the door. Jesus is the door of the sheep. Wolves are not invited in the sheepfold. Goats are not invited into the sheepfold. Jesus is the door of the sheep. And I want to ask you, are you a sheep? Run to the shepherd. Come to the door. Jesus is the door. Is this simple enough to anybody yet? Jesus is simplifying this. Do you understand what he's saying tonight? If the Spirit of God is speaking to you tonight, I would encourage you. Respond. In verse 8, Jesus says, All who come before him are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not listen to him. The sheep did not listen to them because they don't, or the sheep listen to them because they don't know the voice of strangers. The sheep follow their shepherd. They only listen to the doorkeeper. Do you listen to the voice of God? Do you keep his commandments? Do you obey the voice of the shepherd? It's for your own protection that you will follow the shepherd. In verse 9, Jesus once again tells the Pharisees, I am the door. If 
you're struggling with this idea of a sheepfold, if you're struggling with this idea of a shepherd, let me give you an illustration. Imagine your mind, in your mind's a security guard at a little kid's birthday party. Picture someone that is way taller than you, or way stronger than you, definitely not this guy because I'm a 5'7 preacher. The security guard is standing in the doorway of your children's birthday party. He's protecting the children that are within the birthday party. And he is not allowing anybody outside the birthday party to come in unless they have been invited. And tonight, he's protecting the people that are dangerous. He's protecting them from the ones that are packing and they're trying to destroy and wreak havoc. He's standing in the door and he's protecting from the outside world. But as he turns around and he's looking in the sheeple or into the birthday party, excuse me, he's protecting all of these little children. Similarly, in ancient culture, this is what the shepherd would do with the sheepfold. He's standing in the door protecting the sheep. And he's standing in the door, protecting from all those that are harming the sheep. The sheep, the shepherd would rebuke these wolves that were trying to destroy the sheep. This morning, or tonight, excuse me, what I want to ask you again is, have you come through the door? Jesus is that door. Come to the Son. John just got done writing, all that the Father has given to the Son will come to the Son. And whoever comes to the Son, He will never cast out. Tonight I want to tell you, if you come to the Son, Jesus Christ, He will never cast you out. Come and call upon His name, and He will not send you away empty-handed. If you will call upon the name of the Lord and repent of your sins tonight, you will be saved according to the authority of the Scriptures and according to the Word of God. Run to the door. Look at what Jesus says in verse 9. After he says, you've been saved, you will go in and out and find pasture. And I know that this is revival. I know that the circumstances that I'm preaching in, I know that maybe there's people here from other churches and that not everybody here tonight is a Baptist. But tonight I want to tell you, this does not mean that you will lose your salvation. The one that is the shepherd that comes through, the, or the sheep that comes through the shepherd will go in and out to find green pasture. That means they are hungry. The Christian that has been born again will be hungry for the things of the Word of God. You will be hungry for the Word of God. You will be wanting to go and eat in greener pastures. You will be starving for doctrine and theology. You will be spiritually yearning to know Christ as deeply as you can. Tonight, I want to encourage you, if you've come to the door, I'm, I, I would pray that you're going out to find greener pastures. Are you being fed? Do you know this man named Jesus? Do you even show up to your churches on Sunday morning to get fed from your shepherd? Hello, somebody. Do you have a healthy diet of God's Word? If you're not eating at all, and you're not being fed by God's Word, maybe you need to go through the door for the first time and be converted. Do you remember this story I told at the beginning? Oh, I hated that antique, rustic door. I loathed the very thought of that door being in my living room. I hated the very thought of that door even being in existence. Oh, how I hated the very thought of that door. As I pondered back to my pre-conversion years, I recognized how much similarity there is between me and that door, and me and my relationship of the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Before I went through that door, I hated that door. I hated Christianity. I loathed the very thought of the door. I hated coming to church. I persecuted people that came to church. I made fun of people that called themselves Christians. I bullied people in my high school that toted the name of Jesus Christ. I abhorred the things of righteousness, and I hated Christianity altogether. The very thought of me being in church was stomach-turning. I hated it. I despised it. I loathed it. I hated the door. And as a lost person, you hate the door too. You're by nature children of wrath. But then, the Father drug me to the door. This Word of God was preached to me. I heard a preacher get in the pulpit and preach, You must be born again. And the Spirit of God began to work on me. And God drug me to the door. And although I hated the door, the Spirit of God began to regenerate me. God took out my heart of stone, and He gave me a heart of flesh. 
And that new heart that God gave me made me love the door. And I came to the door. And I came willingly. And when the Spirit of God got a hold of me and changed my heart, He bid me to come to the door. And when He bid me to come to the door, I came to the door because of what He had done in my life. I hated the door, and He completely changed that. And when He bid me to come to the door, I ran to the door, and I ran to the door willingly because of the work of salvation that He had wrought in my life. The door now offers me peace. The door is my security. The door is my joy. The door is my salvation. The door's name is Jesus Christ. Would you come through the door tonight? Would you stand with me? Please finish it. I invite you, Brother Mitch. I